In my experience, if there's one thing that we photographers all have in common, regardless of the amount of time that we've been doing photography or our preferred genre, is that desire to improve. And in this video, I want to share with you my favorite tip to help you improve your photography. The only way that we can really improve our photography is to practice and every time we take a photograph we learn a little bit more. And over time all those little lessons that we learn add up to make a really big difference. Most of this learning is actually subconscious, we don't realise we're learning it. But there is one thing that we can really do to really speed up that process and that is to take a much more focused approach to our learning. And today what I want to do is share with you a tip that will help you to be a lot more focused in improving your photography. The most effective technique that I use whenever I'm trying to improve my photography is when I come out to practice, as I have done today, each time I take a shot, I take a step back and I look at the image on the back of the camera. And I ask myself one simple question. And that is, if I could change just one thing about that image, what would it be? And that's the technique that I'm going to look at today. So this morning I've come to Derwent Water and I'm on the western edge of the lake. And as you can see behind me, I'm right by the Centennial Stone. Now this is a classic composition. You have the stone in the foreground and then you're looking up to the view of the jaws of Borrowdale in the background. And what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to set up a nice simple composition, the best composition that I can manage. I'm going to take that shot and then I'm going to step back and I'm going to look at that and then I'm going to ask myself the question, if I could change just one thing, what would it be? And then I'm going to do that. I'm just going to make that one change and I'm going to ask myself, did that improve the image? Let me talk you through this first composition. I have got the camera about two foot off the ground and I have the stone uh, right in the center of the frame sat nicely on the bottom third. And I fit it in the gap in the reflections of the jaws of Borrowdale. I'm at f8 and I'm doing long exposures. I've got the 10 stop in and I'm doing exposures of about 50 seconds just to smooth the water out as much as I possibly can. Uh, I've got the 24 to 70 millimeter lens on and I'm right at 70 mil. And it's, it's as simple as that. And I'm just gonna, just gonna take that first shot. So I've taken a look at that composition and I quite like it, I think it's a nice shot, it's nice and simple. But if there was one thing I could change, I would like the stones to be slightly larger in the frame. So what I've done is I've switched my lenses, I've gone from my 24 to 70 to my 70 to 200. And I've set that at 100 mil. And then I've set up exactly the same composition and I'm using exactly the same settings. And so I'm gonna take this shot and see if it's any better. It's actually very difficult for me to decide which of those two shots I prefer. I do quite like the negative space in the first image, but in the second image, because the stone is slightly larger, I think you can make more of the patterns that have been carved into it. So I'm gonna to have to defer my decision until I get home and I can see it on the bigger screen. But before I do that, I do just need to make a quick note on my phone to remind myself of the difference that I made, the change that I made when going from shot number one to shot number two. Now, as you can see, conditions have changed quite dramatically. Just in the last 10 minutes, we've had a lot of clag roll in, and now the jaws of Borrowdale themselves are pretty much obscured. Now, these conditions are, in my opinion, perfect for the shot that I want to take. It's simplified the scene even more. So I'm gonna retake the shot, and I find myself wanting to go back to 70 mil, 
to make the most of the negative space in this image. And so that might be a little clue as to which of the two shots I took earlier I actually prefer. I've moved on from Doan Water now and I've come to my second location. This is Lador Falls. Now if you read my blog you will know that I was here at the weekend with my friend Tom. And what we were doing here was we were trying to take some intimate shots of the water tumbling over the rocks. But because we've had so much rain there was just too much white water. But in the last couple of days we haven't had any rain at all and so the flow of the waterfalls has reduced considerably. So I've come back today to see if I can get a better shot. The shot that I'm going for here is a simple long lens shot, picking out some detail in the falls. I've got the telephoto lens on, and I'm at 135 mil, and I'm zoomed right in on an area of rock where the water is tumbling over it. I want to use a shutter speed of about a fifth of a second because I don't want to blur the motion of the water too much. In order to get that shutter speed, I've had to stop down to f16. I've also got the polarizer on the front of the lens, but it's turned to its minimum at this point. I really like that shot, but the one thing I don't like about it is the glare that I'm getting off of the wet rocks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crank my polarizer to the max, and that should cut through that glare. But what it's also going to do is it's going to darken the image slightly. Um, and so what I need to do, in order to keep the same shutter speed and aperture, I'm just going to bump my ISO up from 100 to 200, and that'll allow me to keep my shutter speed at a fifth of a second and my aperture at f16. On my way back to the car I pass through this area of woodland and there's loads of mossy boulders and mossy dry stone wall and mossy trees and I'm always trying to work on my intimate compositions and so there has to be something here. I'm going to spend a little bit of time exploring, seeing if I can find something. But I have to be quick because I need to get into Keswick for a meeting at one o'clock and that gives me only about an hour. I've found something that I think kind of works. I have to be honest, it's been a little bit of a rush, but I love this mossy wall here. And I love the patches where you can see the stones in the wall as well as the moss. And so I thought I'd focus in on one of those areas. But I'm also aware that an image really needs a focal point, a, a subject that draws the eye. And so I found this tiny little plant. I think it's a type of fern. And that's going to be my focal point. Um, shot settings, I am using the 24 to 70. It is at 70 mil. I'm about a foot, foot and a bit away from the wall. I'm at f16. Try and keep everything as sharp as possible. And I've got a shutter speed of somewhere around a second because it is quite dark here. I've also got the polarizer on, again cranked to the max, to remove any glare that there might be on this scene. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shot and then I'm going to look at that image and see if there is one thing that I can do to improve it. I guess that shot's okay. Uh, probably not the best work I've ever done, 
don't forget, I'm under a little bit of time pressure. I really don't want to be late for my meeting. And so I've had a look at that. And for me, I didn't quite get the composition right. What I felt was that it was a little bit too central. I wanted to push the fern off to one side even more. And that allowed me to move the camera around a little bit to the right. And that changed the composition quite a lot. It brought in a little bit more wall, but it also brought a large patch of moss more towards the center of the frame. Now, to my eye, looking at the back of the camera, that looks like a better composition. But again, it's one of those ones that I will reserve judgment on and when I get home and I can see it on the bigger screen. I think that has been a very useful morning for me. This is a technique I use quite a lot and I think today I've learned that if I have the opportunity to use more negative space, then I should go for it. Uh, I also have, have reminded myself that if I'm shooting waterfalls, I need to crank my polarizer up to remove the glare from the rocks. And I'm not sure what I've learned about this final composition, this final shot. I am a little bit rushed. I don't want to miss my meeting. Um, now, I just want to talk a little bit about where this technique has come from. Now, although my job before I became a full-time landscape photographer was in IT, originally I was a scientist. I was a scientist up to the age of about 22. My degree is actually in biology. And one of the things that you learn as a scientist is if you want to m measure the impact or, the, or the, the effect of making a change, then you need to make that change, but you need to keep everything else completely consistent. Because if you don't do that, you cannot attribute the effect to that change alone. So that's something to bear in mind. So I would recommend that you now go out and next time you're out shooting, try this technique, set up your composition, take the shot, and then just spend a little bit of time and ask yourself that question. If I could make one change to improve this composition, what would it be? Anyway, I better go now because I really, really don't want to miss this meeting.